Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I find myself in a familiar place and that is underneath the bonnet of my Mercedes Sprinter. And yes, once again, another trip has been cut short due to mechanical problems. I wasn't going to make this video, but I thought I will because there may be somebody out there with a Sprinter suffering the same problems that I've been having just recently. The problem first started when I had warning lights on my dashboard saying, alternator battery visit workshop, low voltage. So I fitted a new alternator. A few months later, I'm still getting the same problem. Then I noticed that one of my leads, or well, the main lead from the battery to the alternator, is a bit old and a bit manky looking. And also, I'll just show you, I've got the lead here. Around about here, this terminal that comes off of the starter motor was actually getting quite hot. So I decided to change the entire lead. And this lead goes, let's find the beginning, from the battery to the starter motor and then to the alternator. And you'll notice on this end there's quite a lot of corrosion, which I did try and clean off, but I was still getting the same battery alternator warning light come up. So eventually I changed the entire lead. So now my Sprinter has got a whole brand new one of these wiring looms fitted to my van. It still didn't cure the problem. So I've basically rewired the whole positive system of my engine. The alternator, the cable that runs from the alternator to the battery, it's all brand new and yet I'm still getting similar error codes coming up, all related to under voltage. I even fitted a voltmeter to my dashboard to see what the voltage is that I'm coming out of my alternator. And it says 14.2 volts most of the time. So it's a real baffling problem. But one thing that never occurred to me, and that was to check the negative terminal that comes from the engine to the chassis of the vehicle. After all, all that positive power has got to go to negative at some point. And this is it. This is the very short, small cable that runs from the engine to the chassis of the vehicle or ground. And once I took it off, I'd realized it was quite dirty. So that's what's made me want to make this video. And I've been cleaning the ends of these. This side, you can see it's very, very corroded, very dirty. And on the chassis itself, it's unbelievably rusty. So I'm hoping that this will cure all my fault codes that keep coming up due to under voltage. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this is the root of all my problems are the root of all the evils of my sprinter. Now let me get a torch and show you where this cable goes. Like I say, just in case anyone else out there is having similar problems, get my little O-light torch, get it on its brightest. Have a look at this. You can see the corrosion around the chassis bolt. So you can clearly see there, there's a bolt hole there where one end of the cable goes and the other end of the cable goes to the top of the engine mount there and again you can see all that corrosion around that so I'm going to clean that with a wire brush clean this one with a wire brush clean the cable as best I can and then put it all back together okay so I've thoroughly cleaned both ends of this I wonder if I should actually get a new cable it is bank holiday so I've got no chance of buying anything today but anyway I've cleaned both ends as well what do you think of this cable? Just look at it. it does look a bit manky, doesn't it? And the ends of this, the solder's all melted, so that's an indication as well that this end has actually got hot. Maybe I should get just a new cable. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together anyway, just to see if it does make any difference. I've also cleaned the other end, like I said I would. It does look a lot better. And when I put this together, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pinch the bolt that holds this cable down, I'm going to pinch the bolt up and then actually wiggle this about a bit so it sort of scores and beds in a bit like you do when you do um, the valves of an engine so yeah I'm just going to pinch it down and then wiggle it when it's and then gradually tighten it up so it really does bed it in yeah anyway take a look at how clean these are now so there you go there's that one down there that's nice and clean, and so is that one there. And this, by the way, this one is actually the 
engine mount. Although looking at it, it does look a little bit pitted still where the cable was sitting. You can see the pits in the aluminium. I'll give that one another clean, I think. I'm gonna give that a better clean. Get back on it before I put it back together. Now I've looked at it more closely, I think I'll have another go at that aluminium part. Now just out of interest, this 13 mil bolt goes into the chassis rail of the van and underneath here you can see it looks really clean and almost brand new even whereas the engine mount bolt was a little bit manky so I've wire brushed all underneath here as well so I do think that this may have been the culprit because this one is really clean and there's no doubt in my mind that was making a good contact whereas this one a little bit doubtful well I'm glad I took this apart because at least it eliminates this possibility so I'm going to go ahead and put all this back together now well, I've managed to replace the cable. It's back where it should be. Take a look. Let me know what you think. Should I actually go and buy a new cable or do you think that'll do? I mean, I'm no mechanic, but um, I'm just sharing my experiences with you. I'm just to hopefully this helps somebody else out in a similar position. So all I've got to do now is put the air filter back on, get in a cab, start it up and see if I'll get that dreaded alternator battery warning light come back on. <sighs> Well, now that's all put back together. Let's hope that's put pay to my alternator battery warning light. Now there is another warning light that came up and this was the real big issue for me because it actually stopped Mary from starting. And that is this. I had this brake warning light come up and this was whilst we were in Cornwall. And uh, like I say, would not start. I'm turning the key and all the time this was lit up, it, Mary just would not start. Now, after a little bit of searching online, I've whittled down this problem to either wheel sensors, gear lever selector, or the brake pedal switch. Now, lucky for me, I've got one of these iCarsoft diagnostic tools. And using this, I've deduced that it is actually my brake pedal switch. So that's my next job, to take the brake pedal switch off and have a little look at it and make sure it's not stuck. Right, let's get it off and have a look. And here it is, this is the switch. Um, this clip is at the top. You have to depress this clip and turn it half a turn that way and then it simply slides out of its holder. A bit like a light bulb. It's like a bayonet fitting. Now there are four terminals inside this, which means there are two circuits. It's one of those circuits is to make the brake lights come on when you push the pedal. The other circuit tells the computer that your foot is on the pedal. So hopefully this is what it is. And looking at this, there's no part number on here. So this switch is actually an aftermarket switch. This isn't an original Mercedes part. So, uh, yeah, I wonder if something inside is stuck. I'm going to smother this or soak it in WD-40, plug my computer back in and see if I've got the right readings on my computer. I really do hope that this is the problem that's causing this brake light switch warning light coming on. All I want is a van that's reliable. Is it asking too much? I mean, that's the reason I brought a Sprinter because I was led to believe that Sprinters are reliable. Oh, it's soaked now. Well, something went click as I was doing that and it doesn't seem to pop out as far anymore. 
something definitely, I felt something click in there as I was doing that. Maybe that was a problem. Something was definitely stuck. Let's plug it back in and see what happens. All I've done is plug it back in. I've not actually fitted it back to the pedal. Will it start? Well, that's a relief. <laughs> right. Now I want the engine off, ignition on, and then I can use this. Okay, so what I've done, I've actually put the brake pedal switch back where it should be because I can't, I can't operate that switch by hand and look at the computer and look at the camera all at the same time. So I've actually put it back in place and going by my little diagnostic tool here, when I put my foot on the brake, only one of those circuits is working. Hang on, none of them are working now. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'll spin you around, I'll show you what the screen looks like so you can see what I can see. Right, so you can see the bottom one says stop lamp. When I take my foot off the pedal, you'll say pedal is not operated. Put my foot back on, pedal is operated. Now this top one, which says brake switch, nothing happens when I touch the pedal. So that's, that should change to operated instead of not operated. That's the parking brake switch. And obviously that's on because my handbrake is on. If I take my handbrake off, you'll see it change to not operated. There you go. So once again, my little iCarsoft diagnostic tool has proved itself invaluable. It just goes to show they are a really good investment. I'm so glad I brought this because this thing has saved me a ton of money. Well, that's all I've got to do now is get to Mercedes and buy myself another brake light switch. And I will be buying a genuine part from Mercedes. I'm not going to replace this pattern part with another pattern part, if that makes any sense. The only thing that does really confuse me is why does she start now when she didn't start before? It's a bit of a worry, I've got to say. Anyway, we can only carry on, do what we can do. So, uh, right, yeah, I'm off to Mercedes now. Well, in the morning because uh, it's bank holiday. What a drag, eh? Happy New Year. <laughs> well, I've just restarted Mary to let her tick over for a bit, you know, charge the battery and all that. And um, yeah, look what happened. I don't think what I've just done worked. But I've got plenty of voltage. This is there, 14.4. So plenty of voltage and yet battery alternator visit workshop lights coming on. Now something just hit me on the side of the head like a brick. Something just occurred to me. Maybe, just maybe, I need a new auxiliary belt as well. So whilst I'm at Mercedes getting a new brake switch, I'll also pick up a new belt. And if I'm changing the belt, I may as well change the attention of pulley as well. <laughs> right, roll on tomorrow.